I just saw the sword that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used in battle. <sighs> Incredible. We are at the Topkapi Palace right now. The most interesting thing about this palace that sets it apart from all other palaces, in Europe at least, is the structure of the whole thing. There's no huge tall castle in the middle where the king is living. You have to remember that the Ottomans were nomadic tribes in the past, moving around in horses and setting up encampments and tents. And then the way they would set it up is they would have a bunch of low tents. The most important person, the Sultan, would be at the middle of the tent, in the middle of all the other tents. This was done partly for security. That way the Sultan would be at the center of the tent or of the palace and if anyone wanted to get to him, they would have to go through all these other tents or all these other buildings and courtyards in this case. So this place not only was the residence of the Sultan or the King, but it was also the administrative center of the whole Ottoman Empire. So comparing to the US, that would be the equivalent of having the White House and Capitol Hill in the same place. It was also the art and cultural center as well. And now it's been turned into a museum that we can go around and see. But the most important thing for me, at least they have here, are relics from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and other very important prophets, objects owned by them, are still at this palace. And this is the only place on earth where you can come and see these things. So behind me is the Hagia Irene, which was a cathedral, an Eastern Orthodox Christian cathedral, that was built under the orders of Constantine the Great more than a thousand years before the Top Kefi Palace was built. Once you're inside the Topkapi Palace, there's a lot of gates you have to go through and one of the important gates is the Gate of Salutation. And this was the gate where only the Sultan was allowed to enter on horseback. So everyone else except for him had to get off their horses and walk in. There's a stepping stone outside the gate where all the horses with the high officials would come and they would like step off and the next horse would come. I just saw some stuff which has probably more historical significance than um, anything I've ever seen. Well, let me give you a backstory so this makes more sense. Since the start of Islam, there had basically been this Islamic caliphates. From what I understand, there were essentially Islamic governments that were governing over the areas of Mecca, Medina. And the head of this government was termed the caliph, and his job was to defend the holy cities of Mecca and Medina. And the caliphates had changed a few times over the centuries as the balance of power had shifted in the Middle East and North Africa. Until 1517, it was controlled by the Mamluk dynasty, so it was called the Mamluk Caliphate, which was based in Cairo in Egypt. In 1517, the Ottomans beat the Mamluks in a war, conquered Egypt, and took over the whole area of the Middle East and the Mecca and Medina. And that was the start of the Ottoman Caliphate. The Ottoman Sultan, whoever that was, was also the Islamic Caliph. And it was his job to be the defender of the holy cities of Mecca and Medina and the defender of Islam in a sense. And one of the things that happened when this uh, transfer ship of Caliphates happened in 1517 were these valuable objects which were belongings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, were passed on to the Ottoman Caliphate. And they were brought right here in Topkapi Palace. And over the years, the Ottoman Sultans collected more and more and more belongings and they were all still in display in Topkapi Palace. And you can come and see it. And surprisingly, not a lot of people actually know about this. But there is the staff of Prophet Moses, which he used to part the sea, right up on display. There's the sword of David. There's the turban of Prophet Yusuf, or uh, Joseph. There's a dress that belongs to uh, Hazrat Fatima. Then there's the sword that belonged to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, himself. His tooth are on display in a case, but they're there. Teeth that he lost in a battle when he was hit by an ax, I think. His handwriting, you can see over there, because a letter of him is preserved. His beard is still there in a casing, you can go see it. The pot that he used to drink water from is still there. It's, it's really hard to find so many things that belong to the people that, that changed the world. 
in inconceivable ways, if you're talking about ancient times especially. And you can see all their belongings in here in Top Gepi Palace and it costs, what, maybe $12 to get in and see it? It's really incredible. It's, uh, <laughs> I'm at a loss of words if you can't tell. It's pretty incredible stuff. So that's it for this little short video. But if you want to learn more about the history of the Ottoman Empire in Istanbul, don't forget to check out my longer version of the video, which should be out a few weeks after this one. 